So the first person we're going to hear from today is Craig Walker. Thank you. When the Thomas Fire engulfed the mountains around Ojai, most of us evacuated, but we closely monitored the progress of the fire on social media and television. As we watched from afar, we were comforted by the amazing skill shown by the firefighters who confronted the fire and limited the loss of life and property. We were devastated, however, when we learned that a young firefighter, Corey Iverson, had died fighting the fire and that he left behind a wife and two small children. Members of the other Ojai decided to honor Corey with a plaque here at Weinberger Memorial Garden. It is fitting that this plaque be located here. First, it's at the, lo it's at the uh, entrance to our city, a reminder that we owe the survival of our town to heroes like Corey. It is right next to Ojai's firefighting Memorial Rock, put here after the 1985 Wheeler Fire to honor the firefighters who saved our town during that fire. It is also next to the Memorial Garden behind me where Ojai parents have placed markers to remember their children who died too young. These are the words written on the plaque. Corey Iverson gave his life on December 14, 2017, fighting the Thomas Fire, the largest wildfire in California history, which burned 281,000 acres and destroyed more than 1,000 structures in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. The people of the Ojai Valley owe Corey and the other 8,500 firefighters who battled this blaze an enormous debt of gratitude for protecting our valley from further devastation. We will never, never forget Corey's sacrifice and that of his family. We dedicate this memorial to Corey's wife, Ashley, and their two daughters, Evie and Taylor Iverson. This plaque, along with a donation to the Iverson Foundation for Active Awareness, are a small token of Ojai's gratitude not only for Corey and his sacrifice, but for all the fighter fighters who saved our community. Today, we are dedicating this plaque to Corey's wife, Ashley, and their two daughters, Evie and Taylor. We hope that throughout their lives, Ashley, Evie, and Taylor will be comforted knowing that the people of the Ojai Valley will always remember Corey and his heroism and bravery on that fateful day. We have all seen the many photographs taken after the Thomas fire, first of desolate charred hillsides, but later showing small shoots of new green life pushing up through the ashes. Life goes on. But Ojai will never forget Corey Iverson and the firefighters who fought this terrible fire. Thank you. So many of you here know uh, Karen Kingsbury, who's been married for 40 or 50 years to a now retired firefighter, Mark Kingsbury. And she also has, they have two sons, Brian, uh, Byron and Ryan, who are also firefighters and who were in Ojai fighting the Thomas Fire. And Karen couldn't make it today, but she's written something for the occasion and it will be read by Nancy Norcross Heron. Thank you all for being here. Richard took some of my words from me. Um, I was, let me just, I'm gonna read what I have and it's redundant a little bit, but um, I've been asked to read a letter written by Karen Kingsbury to Ashley and the Iverson family. Karen and her husband, Mark Kingsbury, are Ojai natives but are currently living in Tehachapi. Mark, along with their three grown sons, have close to 100 years combined of working either with the Forest Service or with various fire departments in Kern County. Unfortunately, Karen and Mark could not be here today. As it was for the rest of us, Karen was deeply touched by the loss of your dear Corey, and she wants to share this heartfelt letter with you, Ashley. So this is my voice, but Karen's words, written and spoken with a deep compassion for your loss and with much love. Ashley. 
As the wife of a firefighter and the mother of three firefighter sons, my heart goes out to you. Two of my sons also fought the monster, known as the Thomas Fire. There aren't many more words that can be expressed that haven't already been said. As a sister in the firefighter family and a sister in the Lord, I would just say that we have the assurance that as the last call and final alarm sounded, the first response in Corey's new life was just beginning. With that assurance in mind, I would like to tell your two daughters a little story. So Evie and Taylor, this is for them. Long, long ago, before time ever began, the great spirit, our father, was moved to share all of his love that his great arms could hold. So he spoke, and the world was formed. The great father smiled. This was good. This was very good. Then the great father moved his hand over the world and made the sun to guide us in the day and the moon and the stars to watch over us at night. He then blew upon the earth and separated the seas and the land, the seas to hold every kind of fish and the land to grow every kind of plant. Now the great spirit, our father, threw his head back and shouted with glee, this is good, oh yes, this is very good. So it was as the great father looked over his creation, he thought, now I shall have some fun. I will create different kinds of creatures, some to live on the land, some to swim in the sea. A seriousness fell over our father and he thought, each creature shall be unique from the smallest to the mightiest. Each will be special, yet different. Some made to walk together, others to travel alone. Yet never will any be lonely, for they shall all be my children. So our father spoke. He created the mighty whale to swim the oceans deep. Then he spoke into existence the yellow giraffe and laughed aloud as he stretched his neck high as the trees. Next our father spoke and created the zebra. With the brush of his mighty hand, he painted it black and white. On and on, the great creator spun into existence every kind of animal, from the fat round bottom of the hippo, the green of the frog, the wisdom of the wolf, to the freckles on the newborn fawn, and joy filled his soul. This he saw was good, that it was all very good. As the creatures looked upon each other for the first time, the great spirit spoke, I am not finished yet. Then our father took some clay from the earth and formed a man. Then he did something very different. He breathed upon the man and gave him part of his very own spirit. As life came upon the man, the great spirit spoke to all of creation. I have created you, each one different, unique and wonderfully made, but I have one more gift to display. Then our father pulled aside a man and laid his hand upon his head and spoke a blessing over him. To you I give a heart of a servant, one who is willing to lay down his life for a friend. I will call you firefighter. Then the great spirit, our father, laid down his head to rest. His last thought before sleep closed his eyes was, this is good, oh this is very good indeed. So Ashley, Evie, and Taylor, I hope this story gives you a little comfort. Corey was a hero, specifically called for a time such as this. With that I say, go in peace. Yours truly, Karen Kingsbury. So if, if you followed this story since the beginning of the year the, about Ashley, the uh, creation of the foundation, etc., you know what completely amazing this woman is. So nothing else to say, Ashley? I have to grow a few inches? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you um, for being here. Um, 
I've lost count of how many times um, Corey has been honored in such a beautiful uh, way, and I, and I want to thank you all for that. Um, and I want to share with you something that I've taken um, in all of this. Um, the first couple minutes after I was told what happened, I was given a gift, and that gift was gratitude when I asked if anyone else was hurt. So that gratitude has only grown and it has it's been a piece of what has kept me going through all of this. And I thank all of you so much for your bravery and heroism. To me, Corey was a hero and to him and all these guys, they're just doing their job. Now I'm gonna go to script so I don't get too lost. <laughs> Since leaving, in my eyes, Corey has become a superhero. A superhero because he has given me a platform to continue his work, only in a way that I can relate to. I've spent over half of my life battling fear, anxiety, and depression, and Corey struggled watching me struggle. It wasn't until November 5th, just one month before Corey left, one of his colleagues took his own life, leaving behind a small son, giving Corey an understanding the devastation it can leave in its wake. Shortly after Corey left, I began asking his colleagues what their level of mental health care was under these circumstances. It became very clear to me quickly that the men and women within the first responder industry have little care after critical incidents and no consistent decompression. The things they see on a daily basis, long work hours, and increased danger due to our current environment is a recipe for disaster. In 2017, there were more firefighter suicides than line of duty deaths. Because of this knowledge, I've spent this year creating the Iverson Foundation for Active Awareness in order to change the stigma within the first responders and help create a new culture that encourages and motivates them to take care of themselves, not only physically, but also mentally, and bring the darkness into the light. I thank you again for honoring my fallen hero, and thank you for helping me to continue to honor our heroes that are still fighting. Okay, we're going to hear a few words from Brian Akins. Brian? Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Akins. I am a tenure trustee on the board of the Ojai Valley Museum. Perhaps the most important thing is I've been the treasurer for eight years. And why is that important? Because when we first started doing this, I have some stats. First email I could find was dated uh, December 27th, December 26th, when we got started on this project. Uh, one of the questions was, well, how do we handle the donations? We'll need to set up an account that will handle checks, credit cards, PayPal. I don't know if any of you have ever set up a nonprofit account. It's a nightmare. Yes, <laughs> isn't it? And so fortunately, uh, the museum, I talked to uh, Mark Lewis, who's our president, uh, Wendy Barker, who's our executive director, and asked if the museum would be able to step in and do a community service by funneling all of the checks, the credit cards, the PayPal payments through the museum. And they did that. And they were there to, th so I have a couple of statistics. There were, uh, last that I checked on my spreadsheet this morning, 71 total donations. 60, those came from 63 folks. Uh, again, we're talking about the other Ojai. 60 of those 63 donations were from the other Ojai folks. Many of them represented here. They came from donations all the way from Paris, France, for our, from our friend Richard Lobley. So, and many states from the people who have been here. Donations ranged from $10 to $500 to $1,000. And each one of those people, as they were putting donations in, often would send comments going, 
we love having, having the opportunity to, to in some way say thank you to Corey and most importantly, perhaps now to you, Ashley, and your two daughters. So a um, couple things. Uh, we actually closed off funding. Uh, Nancy Jones, who's here someplace, oh, here on my right. Uh, we're talking about the Paris updates and the Las Vegas updates. Nancy Jones, on a, in an email sent or a Facebook post on the other Ojai on March 6th said, I think we've hit it, folks. I believe the original target was about $1,500. We ended up with a total donations of $6,921.01. And that's the net amount of fees. That's how we ended up with that penny. <laughs> Just in case, again, I'm a numbers person. Uh, Colleen McDougal, who is in the lavender over on my far left, estimated how much that would cost for the plaque, for the mounting and everything else. And she pegged the amount by $50, or with just a slight variation of $50. And that $50 was a little bit more expense in, in mounting the plaque. So great job. Uh, we'll be bringing Colleen in for our next budget session at the museum. Or maybe, you know, we'll suggest to our, uh, mayor, 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 our mayor candidate, Severo, that for the city budget, you might bring Colleen in for that. So, again, uh, it, it was great. A lot of people, we, we started to plateau just a little bit, and the Murphy brothers, Murphy on my right, said, well, hey, we'll match. We'll give a match up to $500. And so the Murphy brothers, Pat Murphy on my right, did that. And to kick us just a little step four more, Cliff, Oh, Cliff Simonson, who's back here from Bentley Ranch, kicked in $1,000. So, again, a giant thank you to the 63 people that made donations. And again, to share our love from all of us to you, to your family, to your daughters, and to let you know just how much we love and appreciate all of you who come and saved our valley from essentially extinction. Um, pe people ask, so what, did bur what burned in, your o in the Ojai Valley? And we tell them, any mountain you can see, any range you can see, anything you can imagine beyond that, all of that burnt. And it was only because of the firefighters, the first responders, that our valley was saved. And so thank you for that. So Ashley, at this time, I'd like to present you with this check, uh, of net amount of $5,406.64. And again, tell you thank you. Okay, that's uh, we're wrapping up there. Thanks everyone for coming. We'll post information about the Iverson Foundation on the other Ojai, and we hope anybody out there with a Facebook account will do the same. So thanks again for coming. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, um, we created a, a website, so it's iversonfaa.org, and also there's a Facebook page, uh, Iverson Foundation for Active Awareness, so you guys can stay up to date. We've got um, the shirts and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm hoping to have the uh, online shop launched. I was thinking November, but we may need to push it back because we had some good news, but we got to ship our stuff to have it shipped. So <laughs> I'm working on it. Thank you, guys. Okay, so thanks again for coming. And uh, I think we should give a special round of applause to the firemen who are here. <laughs>